Hello everyone and welcome to the first video in a series of videos that will look at several new Resolum plugins coming to the Resolum Juice Bar. I'll be your narrator who will walk you through the functions and possible uses of these plugins. We will first start by walking you through the plugin itself, then we will finish with how you can incorporate these plugins into your own VJ sets. The plugin that we're looking at today is called the Advanced Masker. The Advanced Masker is a new masking tool you can get on the Juice Bar Marketplace that is ran by Resolute. Its purpose is to give you more control over your mask and can be used either directly on a clip or in a layer in Resolute. The Advanced Mask was originally designed as a quick and easy way to mask out logos. And to add it over your VJ Mix as well, <clears throat> C can be used for so much more. For this first example, we're going to use it on a logo, and once we get a hang of it, we will look at how it can be used for more complex content. <clears throat> now here in our Resolume composition, we have a logo of a DJ called DJ Name. As you'll see, it's right up here on Layer 3. Underneath that, we have Layer 2. Now what we're going to do is we're going to apply the Advanced Masker, which can be found under Wire Effects once you have it installed. We're going to apply it to Layer 3 and then trigger both Layer 2 and Layer 3 content. I already had Layer 2 uh, content playing. Now it's in very important to note that whatever layer you're using the Advanced Masker on, that the video opacity for that layer is set to 100. If it's not set to 100, when you start doing things like masking, you'll see that it's not going to work. It's going to fail. And, it's, and that's because when the opacity is not set to 100, it's still going to let whatever underneath play through. But if you set it to 100, like we have right now, you'll see we'll have some very wonderful knockout text. Now, for the advanced masker, we're just going to run down the different controls that you'll find right here in the effect stack. Right now, I have it assigned to layer three, and that's just for the purpose of this tutorial. Again, you can very easily apply it to a clip, and there'll be very good occasions when you will want to apply it to a clip. One of the reasons you would want to apply it to a clip beforehand is if it's a very complex piece of content, like we'll see when we start playing around with uh, these guys over here, uh, you, you'll, want, you'll want to set your mask up beforehand because it takes some tweaking to get it to look real good depending upon how much movement and color change and whatnot you have in your clip. Okay, now <clears throat> when you look at the advanced masker controls, you first get a blend mode and opacity. And these two uh, settings are found on all effects, all video effects in Resolume. They just come standard. The first wire defined effect is the invert RGB, which is pretty self-explanatory. It'll invert the RGB colors of whatever that layer is playing. Underneath that, we have a M threshold, M smoothness, and M contrast. And these three here are used in conjunction with the video fill and white fill to help fine tune your mask. <coughs> so we'll talk about those in depth in a little bit. Followed by that is the inverse mask. And what the inverse mask will do is invert the mask. If you look down here in the preview monitor, we have the black already masked out, but the white DJ name is still there. If we invert the mask, you'll see that now the white is clear and see through and the black is showing. Now you can use the invert mask with in conjunction with the invert RGB to get some really cool effects and as we go along we'll talk about that more probably in a later video. The next set of controls is your channel controls. You have Luma, Red, Green, and Blue. <clears throat> now what these do is it tells the advanced masker what set of data inside of that layer we should use to consider what should be masked out and what should be shown through, with Luma being the default and the most commonly used one. If you think about the brightness of whatever content is playing, the, the brightness, the lumin luminance values are 
essentially, you can think of them as, a, as numbers going from 0 to 255 or 256, with the midpoint being 127. So what this does is it tells the master to, hey, look at the Luma values and use that as to to decide what gets masked and what doesn't get masked. And as we talk, go back to talk about the threshold and the smoothness, we'll see how that really plays out. Outside the Luma, we have red, green, and blue. And all this does is it tells the masker to either use all the red channel data, green channel data, or blue channel data to define what gets masked out and what doesn't get masked out. And again, you know, if you think about hue and color, the way computers create color is by using a combination of red, green, and blue. If we flip over to the DJ name colors logo <coughs> and choose red, now it's using the red data and you see the D kind of disappear. If we choose the blue, <coughs> you get the same effect. The blue goes away. Let's just go back to Luma and finish talking about what we have here. Next, we have the video fill and we have the white fill. Now, these are two separate layers that exist inside the masker. What the video fill does is it deals with all the video data. It, or in this case, it's a logo, but we'll see in a second. It deals with the video data as the mask is being applied. We take the uh, video fill and we bring it down. You'll see all the colored stuff go bye-bye. But you notice how the white's still there. And that's because the white fill is still turned up. So the white fill deals with all the white data and the video fill deals with all the color data. But understand that these two do exist on two separate levels inside of uh, this plugin. And it's kind of interesting too because if you bring down the white fill but bring back up the video fill, you'll still get the white White, white things to come up. And that, again, is mostly because that right now it's just reading the video data. Let's bring both of those guys up. Underneath that, we have a colorize effect and a color picker. And that's just there for convenience. I often find that a lot of the time, especially when I'm doing masking, some uh, I'll be asked to either chase color or by a uh, tour manager and say, can you make it blue so it match, matches the lights? or the content behind it, or just to make the content be more dramatic and stand out, especially when you're dealing with masks. So that's just there as a convenience tool. All right, so let's go back and talk about the threshold, smoothness, and contrast, and how we use that in conjunction with the video fill and the white fill. Now, the threshold and smoothness, those deal with essentially the Luma data that you'll find inside uh, inside the clip or the content you're playing. And to really work with these two, the threshold and the smoothness, I find it's useful that you bring the video fill all the way down like that. Let me uh, flip back over to, uh, actually, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll mess around with this co piece of complex uh, content. So you can get a better idea of how to use this with regular video footage as opposed to just using it for static logos. So when we bring the video fill down, you'll notice the mask goes completely white. And uh, you're not really seeing any of the video, the, the colors that, that are associated with the video. But to uh, really refine this mask, it's easier to find, it's best to find a piece of the content where you want, where you're going to want to uh, essentially tune it up. So I have this little cue point already saved here to kind of make things a little easier. What the threshold does, the M threshold, is it, it defines the midpoint between what is white and what is black uh, as far as the masker is concerned. If we bring it to the left, you'll notice that it's essentially pushing all the values to white. And again, if you think about luminance as a number between 0 and 255, when it's set to 0.5, you're essentially telling it at 127, the midpoint, the exact midpoint between 0 and 255, that's where we're going to make a def. That's where we're going to choose. On one side is going to be masked out, and then on the other side, it's going to be visible. So again, as we move it to the left, everything's going to white and thus being masked out. If 
you bring it to bring it up, it all goes away because it's all being considered black at this point. So normally what you'll want to do is try and find a good midpoint between the two where you have very well-defined edges. And again, this is all up to personal preference and what kind of look you're trying to get. The smoothness essentially helps add texture and grays to the mask. So if we bring it out from zero to about, I don't know, say about three or four, somewhere between there, you can see a lot more texture coming back into the mask. Now, while the threshold and the smoothness are mostly used with the white fill, the contrast is mostly used with the video fill. If we bring the video fill all the way up, you'll see it's adding back in all the color data. But if we grab the mask contrast and we start bringing it down a little bit, you'll start noticing, especially right around here, if you take a look at where the red is, you're going to start seeing some of the uh, video underneath start to bleed through. And that's because we're essentially subtracting contrast. We're taking away the differences in color between one pixel and the next. And that's not a real good technical term to describe what's happening underneath the hood, but it's just an easy way to kind of conceptualize how this plugin is working. Now, let's just say we're happy with this mask and how it's look looking. We'll go back over to the transport, we'll hit play, and we'll see that we're getting a, a pretty decent mask. It looks interesting. And if you want to bump up the contrast a little bit, I, I would bring it back up just to add a little more definition. <coughs> but what I find to be very useful when I'm setting my mask up is that to bring the video fill down a little bit, if, especially if I find that the colors are kind of overpowering and kind of interfering and making it look a little muddy, which can happen sometimes. Typically, I find myself leaving the video fill at 100, excuse me, at the white fill set to 100 and bringing the video fill down a little bit. Because if you think about, again, how the Advanced Masker is working, it's right now it's set to Luma, so it's using the white and black values to really define what gets blocked, what gets masked, and what doesn't get masked. The video fill just adds a little more detail, color, and definition to the image. That's pretty much all you really need to know right now about Advanced Masker. If you come from a graphic design background, I'm sure that these tools will be a godsend compared to what is normally available in Resolume, especially for masking. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. Please like and comment and subscribe for more videos about other plugins I'll be developing for sale on the Juice Bar. Below this video, you'll find a link where you can buy this plugin plus contact info if you have any bugs or feature requests for new plugins. Happy VJ.